We're going to talk about marriage records and how they can benefit your family history research when we come back. All right, we're going to talk about marriage records here in just a moment, but uh, if this is your first time here, my name is Connie Knox, a lifelong genealogist here to help you go further faster and factually with your family research. Now, if you are new here, you probably don't know, but there is a website, genealogytv.org, that has all of the information that we talk about in every one of these episodes, as well as, well, there's a Facebook page at uh, facebook.com forward slash genealogytv, so you can find a lot of information there as well. And a newsletter, make sure you're hooked up with that. All of that information is in the show notes below and at genealogytv.org. All right, we're going to talk about marriage records. So you can find marriage records in civil records and in religious uh, records as well. And well, they come in a variety of forms. They, you know, you can have marriage licenses, which are more common today, and you can have marriage registries, marriage bans, marriage bonds, uh, quite a variety of marriage records. For religious records, you might have uh, religious ceremony records of some sort church registries, books that have their name, their age, their marital status, uh, their residence. There's a lot of information that you can find in marriage records. And sometimes you can even find the parents and grandparents in those records. I know I have in some of the Danish uh, parish registries that I found uh, years ago uh, that had not only the parents, but the grandparents and uh, a lot of great information. Admittedly, I had to get it translated to understand it all, but there's some really good information in marriage records. So marriage bans are showing the intent to marry. So it doesn't necessarily mean that the uh, marriage actually happened, but uh, make sure that you check those out thoroughly because it can show the relationships, it can show baptismal information, and a lot of times these marriage bans were created to show uh, the intent for one to marry so that they could make sure that these people were not related to each other or that there were no objections to the marriage. Kimberly Powell wrote in her October 2019 article on her blog post, she wrote, quote, bans are sometimes spelled bans with one N uh, and were a notice of intent to marry between two specific persons on a particular date. Bans began as church custom later prescribed by English common law. Now, Judy Russell, the legal genealogist, wrote in her 2012 blog post, quote, for the longest time, the way folks got married was that marriage bans were read from the pulpit or posted on the door of the local church. Usually bans were read uh, three consecutive Sundays or posted for three weeks. This allowed people to object to marriages if they needed to, or maybe point out that they are related to each other. Now, links for both those uh, blog posts, which are fabulous, by the way, uh, are gonna be in the show notes below as well as at genealogytv.org if you're looking for those articles. Now, marriage bonds are a little bit different, but Kimberly Powell wrote in her article, quote, a monetary pledge or guarantee given to the court by the intended groom and a bondsman to affirm that there was no moral or legal reason why a couple could not be married. Now the legal genealogist said, quote, a use of marriage bonds was common, particularly in Southern states and mid-Atlantic states, well into the 19th century when most jurisdictions started to rely on what the couple said in a written application for their marriage license. If a couple did not get married, the money was forfeited most of the time. Now keep in mind too that there are a variety of records you can have a marriage license, which is really more common today, marriage contracts, marriage certificates, marriage registries. There are quite a few different, and this is just a part of the list, but there are quite a few different uh, types of marriage records that you can find. Now, where can you find them? I suggest you start with Family Search. Family Search says that they have marriage records dating back to 1570 on up into about 1950. 
Now, Ancestry has a great deal of marriage records as well. And I highly suggest you start with the, the locality. As I'm always professing, you want to start with the location which you're searching. So, for example, on Ancestry, you want to go to the card catalog and you want to drill down into the United States, then you want to drill into the state, and then you want to drill in as close as you can from a locality standpoint, because then you can have an understanding of what records they have online and uh, if they fit your research question that you're seeking, the ancestor that you're looking for, you know, may be in a specific time and place. And so you can see if they have those records. Now on Family Search, it is very similar. You can uh, drill into the uh, Family Search wiki in through the map. And again, uh, look for it by locality first. Now that's not to say you don't want to search by surname because you could get a different set of results. So make sure that you search both ways, first by location and then by surname if you don't find what you're looking for. One of the things that you want to keep in mind about marriage records is a lot of times they, the civil records are usually held at the county level, at least in the United States, and or in the region, depending on where it is you're researching. The religious records, you can find a variety of, uh, of religious records. A lot of times they were also legal documents as well, even though they were created by the church. So keep that in mind. Now, one of the things that I wanted to point out was that you can find evidence of marriage uh, aside from the documents. So you, you know, you have your marriage bands and your marriage bonds, which didn't always mean that the marriage actually happened. So you want to try and see if you can find further evidence of the marriage as well. And you can do that through a variety of places. Some of the places are newspaper announcements, Divorce papers is an evidence of marriage. You can find them in obituaries. If somebody, you know, in an obituary, it says, you know, this person left behind a spouse of 25 years or something along those lines. Also consider looking in Facebook groups and social media places. Cemeteries are also another place that you, sometimes uh, couples were buried together. And so you can find them sometimes even on the same tombstone. Uh, so there's a lot of places that you can look for evidence of marriage beyond just the actual marriage license or marriage registry at the church. So some additional tips, make sure that you are looking on both pages, especially in marriage registries. If you are looking at an image online, make sure you go to the, to the right one page because a lot of times, especially in these uh, registries, they'll have other family members listed on the right hand page. On some of these documents like marriage certificates and marriage licenses and such, look for the witnesses as well and figure out who they are. That's gonna be part of your uh, fan club research because the witnesses are likely uh, family related or friends of the family. Marriage dates could have been recorded later. So keep in mind that um, while the marriage ceremony may have happened on a certain date, and a lot of times you'll see that on a marriage certificate, uh, sometimes those marriages weren't recorded at the county level until much later. And that's usually when the minister could get on his horse and ride to that county to actually register. And sometimes there was roaming uh, ministers that would come to different towns, especially small towns that didn't have their own church or their own ministry and they would perform ceremonies as they were passing through town. They would carry all of those documents back to the courthouse and it could be weeks or months later before uh, they could uh, register the return, which on, on some documents you'll see the return on the bottom of a marriage, uh, a marriage license. Not everything's online. Sometimes you'll find indexes. Sometimes some of these marriages the records for them are not online at all. So you need to check with the local county or even the local genealogical society if you can't find what you're looking for. Now, if you found it online, look for the original source and where you can seek the original records because it's those original documents is really what you're after because they might have more information than what you're seeing online. For example, if you're just looking at an index, it might only have you know just brief information and you want all the information you can get. Now, if you do find something, make sure that you take that marriage date and go see if you can find local newspapers 
uh, because there may be additional information in a newspaper article announcing the happy couple's wedding. And so you might be able to add a little bit of color to your family history with that newspaper article. I hope that was helpful. If you know of other locations where you could find marriage records and or evidence of marriage, put them in the comment sections below. Uh, pe people are constantly reading those comments and may be able to pick up a tip from you as well. All right, I hope that was helpful. If so, thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell so that you get notified each time I upload a video. There are additional videos on the screen for you right now that may be of interest to you. It is time for you to go find your ancestors. So until next time, keep on climbing your family tree.